In a previous video then, you saw me print out some quick change tool holders for the Walco mini lathe and we put these things to a test, testing different materials and different depths of cut with these tool holders and it went pretty successfully. But in today's video I want to share with you the design process of how I made these. So that's what we'll be doing, we'll be talking design for additive manufacturing. To start off with then in Fusion 360 I'm going to be importing a decal that I've made externally from this video. Basically what I've done is I took my tool holder over to a scanner and I've scanned this in with a reference on there. Reference being a 150mm ruler. So with this imported in it gives us a good idea of the outlines of the shape that we're going to have to design and also the ruler allows us to calibrate it. So using the calibrate function here in Fusion 360 we can select two points and with those two points selected we can input a value which we know that is. So using a ruler works perfectly for this because you know the measurements and it's just a case of getting two points on there. With that done this thing is now to scale and we can just mess around with it rotating it until we get it to a position where it's going to be easy to reference off. So for me I'm choosing this bottom left hand corner here and I'm getting that as close to the origin point in Fusion 360 as I can and I'm then just going to mess around with the angles until we get this thing fairly flat and going along the X axis. So with that done I can now run along the edges of this in sketch mode and just sketching out all the lines and matching them up to what is in the drawing. For me this is the easiest way for doing a job like this because it saves any reverse engineering by taking manual measurements. With the sketch all now done then it's time to extrude this thing to the height that it needs to be. So taking a measurement off of an actual tool holder I can get a measurement and then I can just extrude my sketch to the height that that measurement has been. So with that done we start to get something that now resembles a tool holder. Well, kind of. It's not quite there yet, but it will be soon. So first thing I think I'm going to choose to do here is put the cutout in for where the tool holder sits. So to do this, I'm again taking measurements off an actual tool holder and just altering them slightly to be more suitable for additive manufacturing. The main thing here being the bottom section of this. I don't want as narrow as the metal part. I actually want that a bit bulkier so I'm raising that up just to give it a bit more meat on the bottom there. With that sketch all now done we can drag this in extruding it as we go to the depth that we've measured from the metal one. And yeah with that done we've got something that starts to resemble a bit more of a tool holder. Now next thing I'm going to do is go to this top plane here and we're going to add some features on here which is going to make this a lot more suitable for additive manufacturing. To begin with then we need to think of a way of how we're going to attach the tools into the tool holders without them sliding out. So the conventional way in the metal tool holders is to use a drill and tapped hole and some bolts that go through there basically screw in and apply pressure to the lathe cutting tool. But being that these are going to be made from plastic I'll be sceptical of how they're going to hold up over a long period of time. So first of all I need to get three reference points where we're going to be putting the screws in which will be mounting the tools to the tool holders. So that's what you can see me doing here, referencing all these three tools to make sure they're coplanar and adjacent to the mating surface. With those points now constrained then, it's a matter of giving these a dimensional reference of how far from each other they're going to be away. So this was a bit of a trial and error situation just to see what suited this design best and what made it look a bit, you know, odd. So this current setup that we've got now, you know, it isn't even, it isn't symmetrical and it looks a bit funky. So just going to change a few of these dimensions just to make it look more even. And with that being done, those three points are all now complete. So next thing to do is we need to add these as a clearance hole. So I'm going to be using M5 and M6 hardware for this. So I need to allow 
the clearance holes to suit that. So you can see me here in the design, selecting hole, selecting clearance, and then from there we can select what size screw we're gonna be using. And Fusion 360 will automatically detect how deep and how wide that hole needs to be. So there's our three clearance holes, and now we need to find a way of how we're gonna actually attach these. So a design feature which I really enjoy using and something that I find really simple also to do is to make some cutouts here for hexagonal nuts. So when the print is done, we can just sink some off the shelf hardware into these holes and use them as, yeah, fixture holes really. So where a conventional tool would just have these drilled and tapped into the holder itself, what we're gonna be using is off the shelf hardware to act as that thread in a sense. So carefully locating these three hexagonal shapes on the underside of this top part, we're gonna try setting them so they're all about even, all located around the center point of that clearance hole, and then we know from there when these are printed, everything is gonna line up. With that done then, we can now extrude these to the depth of a nut that needs to be. So in my case, I'm going a little bit over as well, just because I don't want the nut to foul on the tool holder. Before we get back to the design then, let's first of all have another look at this 3D print and see what's going on here. So the part is being built layer by layer in the Z axis. So what in a sense that means is that Z axis is gonna be our weakest point of this part. And actually most parts fail by the Z axis delaminating. So we've got to think of a way of overcoming that. And it just so happens by using off the shelf hardware integrated into the design, we can achieve that. Jumping back into the design then, we can have a look and see how this is actually gonna look during the design phase. So to begin with, we're jumping on this top plane and we're gonna be adding some points in here as references for later on features. So to begin with, the one in the center here is probably one that you're used to seeing on your tool holders and that's for the adjustment screw for setting the height. But the ones to the left and to the right of this, you're probably wondering what the hell are these for? I've never seen these on a tool holder before. And bear with me, because in a few minutes you'll see exactly how they're gonna work in this design. So just before we get into that, you can just see me here adding all the features in and constraining these to make sure, again, they're running all along the same plane and that they're all level with each other. And also, it's always good to chuck a few dimensions in there in case you ever want to alter things in the later stage of the design. So, just making these even here and symmetrical, we can then move on to what's going to become probably the main feature of these tool holders, which has made them suitable for additive manufacturing. So the left and the right point here, I'm gonna be extruding out to become a cap headed bolt recessed into the part. And what the idea of this is in the design is when you've 3D printed these and you use cap headed bolts to sandwich them together, that cap headed bolt actually acts as a sort of sandwich block and it squeezes all those layers up together and stops any Z layer deformation or delamination happening. So obviously we need something in the bottom for these cap headed bolts to screw into and very similar to how you saw before, we're gonna put some hexagonal shapes on the underside of this and extrude them up to make some cutouts to allow us to fit some nuts under here. So by using this mixture of nuts and cap headed bolts, it's gonna make this print amazingly strong and rigid compared to if these weren't in there. So it's simple things like this incorporating into your design actually makes the difference between a usable 3D print in the machine shop and something that's gonna break the first time it comes into contact with anything hard. With that vital feature now incorporated into the final design, we're coming to a point now where this thing is nearly completed. Other than the fact that we've not got a thread here for our height screw, which is gonna be an easy thing to achieve now. We've already got that center point, so just sticking a thread in there 
and remembering to tick that modelled box because without that this will not 3D print makes this tool holder pretty much done. And this is now ready to 3D print and test out revision 1. So if you've already seen the video where I test this out you know there's a later revision already come out from those initial tests and it's probably not going to be something I'm going to incorporate into this design video just because if you've seen that video you've seen what was involved and really it's not much different to what you've seen in this video other than we're using some more cap headed screws to sandwich the front portion of this together. Now thanks very much guys for watching this video I hope you've enjoyed it if you want to see more videos like this then please drop a comment below and let me know what you found useful about the video. Other than that, we'll see you next time where we're going to be back in the workshop doing some hands-on stuff. See you next time, guys.